The first question comes from Billy St. John, who asks, at John for Lakers, what do you think of the new Moto X? Hashtag Ask the Buffalo. I love the original Moto X, and I am beyond excited about the new one. So first, they upped the specs and up the screen. It's now not a lower spec phone, really. It's got a 5.2-inch 1080p display. It's got the Snapdragon 801. My, one of my favorite things, though, is custom voice prompts. So instead of just saying, you know, OK, Google, you can just be like, sup, bro? How many species of mountain goat are there? And it'll tell you. Or, sup, home slice? Or... Don't be a Ron, and whatever you want to say, and it'll you can just dig it, which I think is really cool. Of course, all the Moto Maker options are there. So you got crazy customization stuff. They've now got aluminum band around it. You can pick even leathers if you want, which it sounds a little weird to have a back on a phone, but listen, if leather's your thing, I'm not, I'm not here to judge. You do what you want. As long as it's between a consenting adult and a consenting phone, you can use leather. It's fine with me. Uh, pricing went up a little bit though, which is not overly awesome, but so did spec, so I guess it's kind of relative. Uh, it's about 500 bucks if you want to get it unlocked, or 99 if you want to get it to your contract. It looks like a really, really sweet phone. They promise updates are going to be coming to it really regularly. It'll be ready for Android L, so you get sort of the best Google experience plus the awesome Moto Edition, so it's kind of like a win-win. Next question comes from at Calibron, at John 4 Lakers. Is the Note 4 or Note Edge worth upgrading to from the Note 3? That, sir, is the million dollar question, so worth it is totally relative. My wife uses a Note 3 and she loves it. I showed her videos on the Note 4 and the Note Edge and I was like, do you want to upgrade? And she was like, meh, I have no need. She thought that the Note Edge seemed kind of silly. What if you use your right handed? Where are you going to put stuff? And what if you drop it? And that's a lot of concerns people have. But for me, who likes technology, the Note Edge seems absolutely awesome. And I'm really excited that Samsung is trying something new. Whether you like it or don't like it, that's going to be up to you. But they're trying something different. And I appreciate that. Uh, as far as upgrading, the big thing for me, if you don't like the screen on your Note 3, then yeah, it's definitely worth upgrading. You're getting sort of a QHD 2K screen uh, on your phone, regardless of which one you go for. It's either 5.7 or 5.6 on the Note 4 and the Galaxy Edge, respectively. So beautiful screens, big sizes. Um, if you want to have the latest and greatest thing upgrade, otherwise, I think the Note 3 is going to be still a really solid device for another year until the Note 5 and Edge 2 uh, come out. Let me stop the questions for one sec to thank the good peeps at Ting. You've got money in your wallet, you probably want to keep it there. With Ting, you aren't forced to pick a plan based on what you think you might use from data, minutes, and text, which means there's way less waste if you just use less. You simply pay for the service you use. Leave the service whenever you want with no fees, so that makes life much easier. No hidden admin fees, no crazy, sketchy, weird surcharges. Ting bills are super simple to understand and they only charge you usage, but $6 per device plus tax each month, and that's it. So you can figure out exactly what your mobile bill is going to be. You don't use much that month, you don't pay much that month. The mobile phone experience in general includes a lot of confusion and powerlessnesses, and plans tend to be littered with crazy hidden fees, steep penalties, arbitrary rules, unnecessary premiums, and phone companies tend to kind of be unapproachable and inflexible. If you ever tried to call your carrier, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Bottom lines though, consumers are overpaying and underserved. If your phone carrier was a restaurant, you would never go back there. Current customers with Ting will likely see a huge decrease in their monthly bill. Go check out the rates page at technobuffalo.ting.com to see what your new lower bill is going to be. That's technobuffalo.ting.com, that's T-I-N-G. Let's talk about some Moto 360. At Coach CWC asked at John Fold Lakers, do you think sales will not be as good for Moto 360 since it only has a leather band instead of metal until later in the year? I don't think that's gonna affect those sales at all. Oh, that watch is absolutely gorgeous, and it's $249. It's got removable bands, too, so you can go buy a leather, uh, metal band, rather, put it right on and be good to go. I don't think waiting for it is gonna make much sense at all. If it was like 350 bucks, then yeah, maybe make a difference, but 249 is really cheap. It's on par with the other Android Wear watches and sort of just beats the crap out of the looks apartment. It looks like those other two just got beat with the ugly watch stick. Next question comes from Nick Keeks, who asks, at John Four Lakers, what do you think of this new curved screen trend? Do you find them to be useful or do you think they're kind of gimmicky? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, they're probably a little bit gimmicky, but they're also probably a little bit useful. They are definitely still sort of in the infancy of what they're going to be. Uh, but again, I really like that Samsung's trying something new. At some point with every new sort of paradigm shift in technology, there has to be sort of a first device that tries it and sort of puts it out first. This may not be the best implementation, and it happens. Uh, but there always has to be someone that's trying it to get this sort of the audience and the consumers used to something new. And that's what we're seeing here with the Galaxy Edge. There's been sort of curved screens before. Uh, you know, I know we've got things like the G Flex, uh, and uh, the Galaxy Nexus had a little bit of a curve to it, uh, but it's something brand new as far as how you use the device. It's sort of a whole separate screen on the side. Uh, we'll see how consumers are going to respond to it. Uh, I think one of the things you're going to want to see in person before you use it, kind of weird that you can't really have controls on the side. Again, what if you drop it uh, and it lands on the right-hand side? A lot of concerns there, uh, but I think it's the future. I think curved screens, at least wraparound screens, are really going to be something that's going to come very, very, very fast. I think we're going to see sort of wraparound screens uh, for advertisements on you know, power poles and such, and that's going to be happening much sooner than we expect. 
It's just kind of getting people used to it. Uh, as far as the phone goes, I'm really excited to see it though. I just want to play with it. And what do you guys think? Are you excited about crazy curvy screens? I want to hear your thoughts on it. Until next time, I'm John Ranger from Techno Buffalo. Of course, check us out at technobuffalo.com. See you guys next video. Bye bye. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. We love making tech videos here. And if you like watching them, be sure to hit the giant subscribe button so you know exactly what's happening in the world of technology. And if you like gaming and you want to see us play some games, albeit sometimes kind of badly, check out our new Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash technobuffalo.